I'm sorry, I forgot to turn the mic on again. So good morning. So if you're sitting in a chair, please line your feet up looking like the number 11. If you're sitting on the floor, you can be cross-legged, lotus, half lotus. Let's all roll our pelvis forward, sit up nice and tall, pull your abs in and up, lift your breastbone, and balance your head beautifully on your neck. Let's close our eyes and ask ourselves how we're doing this morning. How's your digestion? How are your joints? How's your mood? Once that's established, let's extend our arms, palms up, inhale up. And then two fountain breaths. Good. Loosen up your shoulders and let's say good morning to one of our shoulders making the largest forward circle that your body is capable of making. And then we'll go backwards. Good. Let that go. And let's do the other arm. Good morning, shoulder. Time to wake up and get the juices flowing. And let's go backwards. Good. Excellent. All righty. So now let's sit up straight and tall. Lift your breastbone. Extend your arms left and right out of your shoulders. Bend your elbows. And we'll do the swaro cactus thing. Don't forget, the challenge to doing this is to keep your elbows up at shoulder level. And if you want to be really intense about it, you can do both hands in motion at the same time, but it's not necessary. And then when you're done with that, mm, give everything a nice loosening wiggle, take a deep breath. <sighs> Good. And let's push away our imaginary wall. Really straighten those elbows, fan your hands out as broadly as they'll go. So you should be able to feel the effort right from the middle of your back. And a soft little fist that you point at the floor. Back to the infernal wall. Then index finger to thumb and squeeze, second, third, and fourth. Backwards, fourth, third, second, and first. Good. Shake that out, give everything a wiggle, and let's do the piano scales. This gives us an opportunity to get every little joint in our hands a nice flex. Then palms up and a gentle little flopping motion. We're stretching the inside of our wrist in a very gentle way. Good. Let that go. Take a nice breath. <sighs> Good. So let's do uh, some work with our necks and our spine. So we'll start with cat and cow stretch. Le your head comes forward, your belly goes back, you're exhaling down. As you inhale, you're lifting your breastbone, looking up. And you simply go back and forth repeating that in time with your personal rhythm. Might be faster, it might be slower. The important part is to time your motions with your breath. And when you've had enough of it, you just come back to center, give everything a loosening. Good. Now, let's do the same thing for the top of our neck. So use your nose as a pointer and draw a figure eight on its side using just your nose. And you can listen to all the funny noises that your neck makes. Stop and go backwards. Lots of popping this morning. Huh another one. Alrighty, so when you finish with that, come back to center. Remember, check in with your posture. Make sure your breastbone is lifted because now we're going to do the center of the neck. So keep your breastbone lifted but while you allow your chin to approach your chest. Don't let it sink. And when you've gotten to the end of this, you just stop and wait 
breathe encouragement into these big muscles back here. And then sooner or later, your muscles will open and your chin will go a little bit lower. Breathe into it. When you're ready, roll your right ear to the right. So now your right ear is looking at your right shoulder. Your face is looking at the wall opposite. And you're breathing. Then it's time to nod a slow yes. Notice how that changes the way the muscles on the left side of your neck feel. And when you're ready, roll your head to the middle, then over to the left. So now your left ear is looking at your left shoulder. You're looking at the wall opposite. And you can feel the stretch beginning to develop in the right side of your neck. Keep breathing. And when you're ready, nod a slow and gentle yes. Once again, noticing how that changes the way the right side of your neck feels. And when you're ready, you can roll your chin to the middle and over to the right. Back to the middle and over to the left. And you just keep rolling it nicely left and right. And when you've had enough of that, you come back to center, and there we are. Loosen up everything with a nice little wiggle, take a breath. Okay, so this morning we're gonna do something for our ankles. <clears throat> and since the first half of the practice is chair yoga and standing, we don't do a lot with our ankles, yet they're very important and they need our attention. So whether you're sitting on the floor or a chair, Stretch your legs, well, stretch one leg out in front of you if you're in a chair. Pick it up, pull your abs in, and just point and flex that foot. That's all you're doing. It's a very small motion, but it's very important for the health of your ankle. Now, take that foot, draw a circle with that foot without moving the rest of your leg and without letting your belly go soft. Be sure to go in both directions, very important. Good, when you're ready, put that foot down, let your tummy go slack, lean forward a little bit, take a breath. This is also going to be good ab work. All right, so now we're gonna sit up straight again. We're gonna pull our abs in, firm them up, and take the other leg, point and flex that foot. Make sure your belly is still tight. Now circle that foot. This is my injured foot, so it's really much more difficult to do this. Go backwards. Keep that, those abs tight, but also breathe. And put it down, lean forward, take a breath. Ah, let your tummy sag for a second, good. All righty, so let's do a seated spinal twist. If you're sitting in a chair, we still want your feet to be flat on the floor, perpendicular to one another. If you're sitting on the floor, it's right leg over left, left arm to right knee. Everybody sit up straight and tall. Use your hands on the floor or the chair to help you pivot to the right and breathe. We want your breastbone lifted. We want your abs engaged and your Spine as vertical as you can make it. Shoulders back. And we can now twist back a little bit deeper. And release it. Come back to center. Give everything a nice loosening wiggle. Take a breath. Because <sighs> we're going to do the other side. If you're on the floor, it's left leg over right, right arm to left leg. Everybody sit up straight and tall, pivot to your left. Breathing all the way. 
engaging your abs. You're wringing out your viscera while we're stretching your back and breathing. When you're ready, we'll twist back a little bit more and release it. Good. Give those shoulders a nice loosening wiggle. Take a deep breath. Hmm. Okay, let's see if there's one more thing we want to do. Yeah, I think there's one more thing we want to do for our shoulders. So you want to sit comfortably again, but you're up on your sits bones as usual, lifting your breastbone, engaging your abs. We're just going to bring our arms up behind our head. If you cannot interlace your hands behind your head, you can do the apple picking and that'll help you. So hands behind head interlaced, take your elbows backwards any amount, hold it and breathe. Release it, let them come forward a little bit and then let's go backwards. Keep your head and chest up, your shoulders are back, and you're breathing. Release your shoulders, let them come forward a little bit. One more time, push your shoulders backwards, breathe into it. Good, and release it. Yeah, let those shoulders have a nice little wiggle. Good, so we'll move from our shoulders to our hips. We're gonna do the frog. And of course, you can do it from a seated position on the floor or a chair, or I'm gonna do it today from a standing position. So here we go. Whether you're on the floor or a chair, you're gonna spread your feet wide, as wide as you comfortably can. And then we wanna get the stretch to come out of our hip joints. So keep your head and chest up so you have a nice flat back and simply lean forward. If you're in a chair, keep your hands on your knees and you simply lean forward, keeping your back straight until you come to the natural end. Don't let your head droop unless you're doing it from a standing position. Keep your head and chest up. Feel the hip as it begins to stretch and breathe encouragement into those big joints. You may notice the amount of tension that you hold in your shoulders, but most of us don't notice how much tension we can hold in our hip joints. This is a terrific posture to help us begin to open that joint. And sure enough, as you keep breathing into it, you may find yourself go a few millimeters more, which is lovely. Keep breathing. When you've had as much of this as you want to have, all you have to do is pick up your head and chest to reverse the process as you come up. Good. So let's stand up. If you were doing it from a standing position, you'll want to shake out your legs. But even if you did it from the floor or a chair, you still want to do shake out your legs. Alrighty, so I think today we should start with Tadasana as usual. So we're going to put our feet together so they look like the number 11 and they're hip width apart. And of course, any doubts about what hip width is can be banished simply by putting your fists together and putting them in between your big toes. So now feel the floor, feel whether or not each quadrant of your foot is bearing more or less weight than the rest of the foot and even that out. Then you can pull yourself up through your ankles, pull yourself up through your legs. You can touch your, tuck your pelvis a tiny amount, but you really want to pull your abs in and up as you lift your breastbone, ask your shoulder blades to go back and down. Balance your head beautifully on your neck. And there we are, Tadasana, the mountain posture. Breathe into it. 
send all of that lovely oxygen to the farthest corners of your body. Let's bring our arms out. Interlace your fingers. Notice which one's on top. Reverse, stretch, bring your hands behind your back, interlace, send them as low as they'll go, and lift into chest expansion. Good. Release that. Bring your hands out again. This time, make sure the other index finger is on top. Interlace the weird way, send them as low as they'll go, and lift. Breathe into the stretch. Ah, that's lovely. Release it. Good. Shake out those legs. Let that work and effort go. Now it's time for warrior one. So I need my handy dandy safety equipment chair. Remember on this one, we have a left lane and a right lane. So you want your left foot in the left lane, right foot in the right lane. This will help your balance. Step forward with your left foot because my left hand is on the chair. My right leg is behind me straight. So now, if I put my hands on my hips, my hips are pointing over there, and I would like them to point the same direction as my left toes. So using my hands on my hips to help me orient, there I am. And my shoulders are also pointing in the same direction. Good. Now, I can pull my abs in, I can make sure my chest is lifted, and I can raise my arms. I can do yoga mudra arms. I can do palms facing. I can do goddess arms. I can do prayer position. I can do hands on hips. I have a plethora of places that I can park my arms. You choose what's best for you. And while you're standing here, if you've chosen an arms raised position, See if you can straighten your elbows. If your arms get tired and they begin to sag, instead of sagging, choose an arm lowered position to help them feel better. Keep breathing. When you've been here as long as you'd like to be here, all you have to do is bring your arms down and step forward Shake out those legs. Let them know that that's over. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Give everything a nice loosening. Okay, so I'm turning around so I can put my right arm on my chair. And I'll step forward with my right leg. Now my left, uh, right knee is bent over my right ankle. My left leg is straight. It's in the left lane. So we're good. Now, if I put my hands on my hips... I can bring my hips to face the same direction as my right toes. Good. Now I'm nice and vertical. My chest is lifted. And now I can decide what I'd like to do with my arms. I prefer this posture, but it doesn't matter as long as you choose an arm posture that works for you. If you chose an arm raised posture. The trick is not to let your shoulders come up, but to roll your shoulders back and down, even though your arms are lifted and your elbows are straight. It's a challenge. Keep breathing. Check in with various parts of your body and see how they're doing. If your tummy is sagging, it's time to tighten them up. If you're holding your breath, it's time to breathe. When you've been here as long as you'd like to be here, all you have to do is bring your arms down, step forward, and shake out your legs. Oh, good. Give everything a good loosening wiggle and let that work and effort go. Okay, so it's time for an inversion. I have to push my chair out of the way so it won't get in my way. Alrighty, so I'm putting my feet right back into Tadasana, and we're going to head for the floor, but not like a limp noodle. As usual, we want to keep our head and chest up 
until the last minute so that we can have a flat back, which is less stressful for your back. Okay, we're gonna inhale up. Swan dive, exhaling till you're parallel to the floor, stretch forward and then relax your back and hang upside down. And there we are. Check in with your neck. If the top of your head is not pointed at the floor, ask your neck to relax. And breathe comfort and encouragement into all those stretching muscles up and down the backs of your legs and into your back. And notice that you'll go another millimeter or two even lower. Then stretch to the right, take hold of whatever part of your anatomy you find. Notice how the stretch has changed. Check in with your neck and breathe. Come back to center, stretch to the left, take hold of whatever's over there. Keep breathing. And when you're ready, come back to center, put your hands on your thighs, come up to a flat back, and stand up. Good. Let go of everything that might need a nice loosening. Good. Okay, so what are we gonna do now? I think we need to do a nice balance pose. I think the tree would be a good choice. Let's do the tree. Okay, so in order to do the tree, we want our chair to be handy. And I've got my chair on my left because I'm gonna be standing on my left leg. So the first order of business is to stand up straight and tall and find the drishti. A little spot somewhere out there, either at the horizon or down 45 degrees, and that is what you're gonna stare at. Meanwhile, turn your right leg out 90 degrees and decide where you'd like to park your foot. If you need to, you can leave your toe on the floor and rest your heel on your ankle. Or you can pick up your foot against your ankle or against your calf or against your knee. Or you can bring it right up into your groin, whatever position is best for you. Once you get your lower body organized and you find your balance point, you can decide what you'd like to do with your arms. You can put them on your hips, prayer position, do all the same hoo-ha that you did for warrior one. You make the choice, it's yours to make. And if you're having a bad day, don't be upset. No praise, no blame, it is what it is. Breathe. Stay as long as you like. There's no rush to come out of it. But if you're ready, just put your foot down, shake out your standing leg, shake out the other one. Take a breath. Ah, good. Okay. So it's time for the other side, of course. So I have to move my chair to my right side because I'm standing on my right leg. So once again, first order of business is to find your drishti then decide where you'd like to park your left leg. Breathe. And when you find your balance point, decide where you'd like to have your arms. One of the things which is always interesting about arms raised positions is they increase your heart rate. Ah. <sighs> Talking while doing yoga uh, means lousy balance. When you're ready to come out of it and there's no rush, stay longer if you want, just put your foot down. <laughs> 
comes down pretty easily. Shake out those legs. Take a deep breath. Okay, give everything a nice loosening wiggle. Good, all right. Okay, so we're gonna do another thing for our gait. Describe for yourself a little circle on the floor, three or four feet in diameter. Turn to your right and walk around your little circle, making the largest steps you comfortably can. Come back to the starting position and do the same thing backwards. Take as much time as you need, there's no rush. When you get back to the starting position, turn around 180 and walk forward. Last time, when you get back to beginning, go backwards. And there we are, it's magic. Okay, so let's do one of our little strengthening exercises for our hips and thighs. So we need our chair again. I'm gonna stand with my left hand on it. And I'm gonna pick up my right leg and I'm crossing it in front of my left leg. Then I'm sending it out to the right, but my toes are still facing forward. And then I'm putting it behind my left leg. So that you're just describing a nice arc. If you wanna pause at each station, that's perfectly fine. If you don't wanna pause at each station, that's fine too. The trick though is to do it slowly enough to really work your muscles. If you do it too fast, the momentum that you generate makes it very easy. We're not trying to make this easy. We're trying to benefit these muscles. So doing it slower is better. Then put that foot down, shake out your standing leg and go, yes, it's over. Good, it's over, all right. So now we're gonna move around to the other side of the chair so that we can keep our right hand on our chair. Pick up your left leg, cross it in front, out to the side and behind. And again, the major challenge here is to keep those left toes facing the same direction as the right toes. Don't forget to breathe. Very important that we keep breathing. Good, step down, shake out your standing leg. Good, all righty. So we're gonna come around to our chair and sit again on the leading edge of our chair as we like to do. And we're gonna do the lower half of the eagle. I don't ask us to do the lower half of the eagle when we do the upper half because the risk of having people fall down is way too high, plus, you have to spend so much of your attention keeping your lower body from falling down that you don't pay any attention to what your shoulders are doing. But if we do it separately, we can do what we need to do. So tr cross your right leg over your left leg and then take your right foot and see if you can get your right foot to sneak around behind your left leg. Then once you get in position, sit up nice and straight and tall and we're just stretching a different part of our hips than we usually do. Breathe. Unpretzel, put your right foot on the floor. Now, cross your left leg over your right leg and see if you can sneak your left, I'm, yes, left toes around behind your right leg and sit up straight and tall. Now, some people will find that they can do it on one side, but they cannot do it on the other. Don't worry about it. There are a lot of things like that that we do in yoga where we, the asymmetry of our bodies doesn't let us do it as well as the other side. Don't worry about it. Breathe. And then release it. Good. 
Okay, so that's it for the first half hour. I realize that some of you are going to be leaving us. I hope that you will take five to 15 minutes, lay down on your sofa or your bed, close your eyes and rest and just let go. And notice how your body feels and whether or not that's different than when we started. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 10 a.m. I hope you have a great weekend. Namaste. All right. So, floor yogis, let's see. What do we want to do today? I think we should start in um, the tabletop pose as usual. So, we want our knees to be under our hips and our hands under our shoulders. Fan your hands out as broadly as they'll go. Pretend that your fingers don't like each other. And then do a couple of cat and cow stretches. Come back to center. Hips and head to the right, hips and head to the left, and go back and forth in a slow motion tail wagging. Good, and then come back to center. Alrighty, so let's take our right bent knee to the right, hip high, and then down. Left bent knee, hip high to the left, and down, back to the right, and back to the left. Good, so stick your right arm straight out in front of you, and then down, left arm straight out in front of you, and down, left leg, right leg. Now we're gonna do the cross body crunches. So the idea, is I'm going to stretch out my right arm and my left leg at the same time. Then I'm going to bring my elbow and knee together and then stretch out and then go down. So it looks like this. Then left arm, right leg. And then back to the original. And you just keep going. When you've had enough of that, you just come back to center. And we're gonna set up for the lunge. So, let's bring our left foot forward so that our left foot is in between our hands. We want our left shin lined up over our ankle. <clears throat> and you can either scooch your right knee back or your left toes for forward until you're in a nice little groin stretch. Not a big one, but a little one. When you get your balance, bring your left elbow up. Then your right hand comes up. Look up. Breathe. We're going to do the twist today. So palms together, twist to your left. Keep breathing. Come back to center, hands down. Now begin to slowly straighten your left knee and lift your left toes. And you're now bowing over your left leg. This should give you a lovely hamstring stretch. If you want more stretch, lower your head and chest. If you want less, raise your head and chest and breathe into the stretch. When you're ready to come out of it, slowly move your pelvis forward, bend your left knee, your toes come to the floor, and you go back to the starting position. Once you're here, bring your 
left hand to the right side of your left foot and bring your foot behind you. Now you can bring your right foot forward. Again, get that knee lined up over that ankle. Wiggle your toes forward or your knee back till you're comfortably stretching. And then we can start finding our balance. So our right elbow comes up. There's no rush. Then the left hand comes up. And we make ourselves as vertical as possible and breathe. When you're ready, you can put your palms together in prayer position and twist to the right. Keep breathing. When you're ready, come back to center. Hands come down. Slowly move your pelvis backwards. Your right knee straightens, your toes lift. <clears throat> and you're bowing over your right leg. And just as before, you get to moderate the amount of stretch your hamstring is getting simply by raising and lowering your head and chest. Keep breathing. When you're ready to come out of it, slowly move your pelvis forward, your knee bends, your toes come to the floor. And when you're ready, your right hand comes to the left side of your right foot and you can move your foot behind you. Okay, so let's take advantage of the place that we are right now to go into downward facing dog. Don't forget, you can always come up onto your knuckles or you can go down onto your elbows to protect your wrists. Then curl your toes under, lift your butt into the air, and then push your chest back as close to your knees as you can and breathe. Your elbows are straight. Your fingers are as far apart as they can be. If you want, you can flex one knee, you can flex the other knee, etc. or not. Now you can stay as long as you like, but I feel like I'd like to come out of it. So I'm touching my knees to the floor, big toes together, knees apart, forehead on floor. This is child pose. But of course, if you have knee issues, sinus issues, feel free to roll over onto your back and pull your knees up onto your chest. When you land in your rest position, don't forget to take two big breaths to help your body relax and release. Remember that the letting go is just as important as the doing. So if you're not laying on your back, it's time to lay down on your back. So let's bring our hands to the floor and just draw a circle on the ceiling with your knees, making them <clears throat> make sure they're together and go backwards, enjoying this lovely little massage for your lower back. <clears throat> Good. 
then put your hands on your knees and draw them apart, around, and bring them together. So each knee is describing its own circle on the ceiling. This is a wonderful, wonderful warm up for hips. Get them nice and juicy. Go backwards. So each hip is still getting its circular motion and each knee is going in its very own circle, which is the opposite of the circle the other knee is doing. Good. Then take your hands down, put your feet on the floor. Slide your left leg out till it's straight. You can then clasp your right knee or behind your right knee, whichever you prefer. Pull your right knee to your chest on the exhale. Let it rebound on the inhale. The wind relieving posture. When you're in this posture today, let's direct our attention to our lower back and feel how good this feels to our lower back. Then bring your left knee up, transfer your hands to your left leg, put your right foot on the floor, slide it out till it's straight, and continue. Once again, today, let's direct our attention to our lower back and see how lovely this feels. All righty, good. So, we're going to do the bridge. So bring your knees up. So both feet are flat on the floor, hip width apart, and bring your arms close by the side of your body. If, if like me, you can roll your hips left and right and get your forearms under your hips, so much the better. <clears throat> and now tuck your pelvis a little bit and let it down. Tuck it a little bigger and down. Each time you tuck, tuck it a little bigger. Finally, you'll be up on your shoulders and you can walk your feet a little bit closer. And at this point, you can roll your shoulders behind you, interlace your hands, and there you are. This is the bridge. You can always do this whenever I suggest doing the inverted tabletop. People who have wrist issues just cannot do the inverted tabletop. So you do the bridge. This is fine. It's working the same group of muscles. It's demanding the same amount of strength. And breathe. You can really feel your legs working. And that's a fine thing. When you're ready to come out of it, and stay longer if you want to, just bring your arms out and around. And then slowly, one vertebra at a time, Lower your back to the floor. When your hips come down, you're done. Bring your knees up onto your chest and give them a hug. Take a deep breath and let that go. Then we want to release our necks. Some necks are hyperachievers and they don't let go very well. So allow your knees to sway left and right slowly. And when your knees go left, roll your head to the right and vice versa. If you have questions about any of the stuff that we're doing, feel free to call me or email me or text me and say, why are we doing this? Okay, good. So come back to center <clears throat> and put your right ankle on your left knee, right hand on right knee, push that knee away and let it rebound. And keep doing that. We're warming up for the half pigeon.
Now, take your right hand between your thighs, left hand outside your left thigh. Pick up your left thigh, even though your right ankle is still there, and there we are. This is the half pigeon. So, you should be feeling a nice stretch in your right cheek, but if you want more stretch, you can roll a little bit to your left, you can pull your hands and arms closer to your face, or you can stretch your left leg to the ceiling. Choose any one or combination of those modifications to get the optimum amount of stretch out of your gluteus maximus and breathe into it. Slowly, your hip joint is opening. Slowly, that giant muscle is beginning to open. Of course, you can stay as long as you like, <clears throat> but if you're feeling that you're ready to come out of it, release your hands and allow your left foot to come to the floor, then the right. Okay. So, put your left ankle on your right knee, left hand on left knee, push it away, let it rebound, etc. Okay, take your left hand between your thighs, right hand outside your right thigh. Pick up your right thigh, and there we are. And again, you have options. To intensify the stretch, you can pull your leg closer to you. You can roll a bit to your right, or you can extend your right leg to the ceiling. Choose those variations that work for you. Discard any that don't and breathe into your left cheek. <coughs> Pardon me. Encourage your left gluteus maximus to open up Keep breathing. When you're ready to release it, just release your hands, allow your feet to come down to the floor, and there we are. Let's put this back on. There we go. And my watch has come undone. Goodness gracious, everything happens at once. <sighs> Take a nice deep breath. Feel your lower body at this point. It should be tingling. We've been giving it a lot of stimulation. So let's roll on to our right side. Extend your arm above your head and rest your head on your arm. Left hand is flat on the floor in front of your chest. Your knees are drawn up, and now you can ride your giant imaginary bicycle. Go backwards. When you're ready, kick forward once, back twice. Then pull your left knee towards you so that you can reach down and grab your toes. 
once you get hold of your foot, push your left knee toward the bottom of the mat for a nice quadricep stretch. If you can, keep forcing your hand and foot behind you into the half bow position. The word bow in this case is like an archer's bow. Breathe into it. When you're ready to come out of it, simply release your toes, let them come down to the floor, straighten out both legs, lift both legs together a few inches off the floor, make sure your abs are engaged, and breathe. Just like the standing position where we work on the tops of our thighs, this too helps us strengthen those side stabilizers. When you're ready, simply bring your legs down and roll over to face the other direction, which for me is a big deal. There we go. Okay, so now you're resting your head on your left arm and you're ready to ride your giant imaginary bicycle. Go backwards. Then kick forward once, back twice. Good. Now bend your right knee so that it comes up in front of you and you can reach down and grab your right toes. Then push your right knee behind, back, not, rather I'm trying to say the word down. There we go, down to the bottom of the mat. Feel that quadricep stretch. And if you can, push your foot and your hand behind you into the half bow. Breathe into the stretch. If you can't get into the half bow, don't worry about it. The fact that you're stretching your quadriceps is enough. When you're ready, release your foot, let it come down. Straighten out both legs together, lift them together, make sure your abs are engaged and breathe. When you're ready, simply let everything come down and roll onto your back. Get yourself into good alignment, straighten out your clothing, and there we are. You can either stretch out flat, or I, I often recommend pulling your knees up onto your chest, giving your legs a hug, which is very soothing for your lower back. It's up to you. Because now it's time to get ready for deep relaxation. So if you need sweaters, blankets, cushions, pillows, socks, whatever, put them on, get them organized so that you will be wonderfully comfortable and warm while we do our deep relaxation. When you get back into your relaxing posture, One of the variations that you might want to explore is you separate your feet wider than hip width apart and put them flat on the floor. Then you allow your two knees to lean against each other. This is 
friendlier for lower backs that are uncomfortable laying with your legs straight out in front of you. This is easier. And by allowing your knees to lean on each other, you won't need to use any muscles to keep them up. So this is another relaxation pose option that you can use or not at your discretion. When you get organized, make sure your eyes are closed. Take a few nice deep breaths to let go of all of the work and effort that we've put into today's class. And just surrender into gravity's pull. So now it's time to wiggle your fingers and toes, make any loosening motions that might feel good before you roll to one side to come up to a seated position. Once we get there, get organized, we'll sit up straight and tall, we'll lift our breastbones, close our eyes, lower our heads, and give thanks for this day. and lifting our heads and opening our eyes, we can say to one another, Namaste. I'll see you back here Monday morning. I hope you have a great weekend. It'll be so beautiful. Enjoy.